ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय अथ दैत्यसर्वे श्रुवा तदनुवर्णित झगृ निराबद्यावाशिक्षित अथ दैत्यसर्वे श्रुवा तदनुवर्णित झगृ निराबद्यावा Translation. Narada Muni continued, All the sons of the demons appreciated the transcendental instructions of Prahlad Maharaj and took them very seriously. They rejected the materialistic instructions given by the teachers, Sasanda and Amarka, responsibly. Purported by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Shri Prabhupada ki. Yeah. This is the effect of the preaching of a pure devotee like Prahlad Maharaj. If a devotee is qualified, sincere, and serious about Krishna consciousness, and if he follows the instructions of a bona fide spiritual master, as Prahlad Maharaj did when preaching the instructions he had received from Narada Muni, his preaching is effective. As it is said in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, Satam Prasangam Mama Bhairya Samvido Bhavanti Hat Karna Rasayana Katha. If one tries to understand the discourses given by the Sat or pure devotees, these instructions will be very pleasing to the ear and appealing to the heart. Thus, if one is inspired to take to Krishna consciousness and if one practices the process in this life, he is surely successful. in returning home back to godhead by the grace of pralad maharaj all his class friends the sons of the demons became vaishnavas they did not like hearing from the so called teachers shanda and amarka who were interested only in teaching them about diplomacy politics economic development and similar topics meant exclusively for sense gratification om agyan sibirandasya ಯಾನಂಜನಾಶಲಖ್ಯಾಕ್ಷುರನ್ಮಿಲಿತನ್ಯೇನಸ್ಮೈಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಾಂಸಗ್ರಾಜತಾಗನಾಗುನಾಥನ್ವಿತಂಥಂಸುಜೇವಂಸಾಗನಾಲಿಥಾಶ್ರೀವಿಶ
in which he will kill Hiranyakashipu. So Narada Muni is pointing out that all the sons of the demons, they very much appreciated the transcendental instructions of Prahlad Maharaj and they took these instructions very seriously and as a result they rejected the materialistic instructions which were given to them by their teachers, the sons of Shukracharya, namely Shanda and Amarka. Prahlad Maharaj gave them transcendental instructions and he gave them even though he was in a very, very difficult situation. Prahlad has a great fortune of receiving these instructions when he was in the womb of his mother. His mother uh, was kidnapped by the demigods. His father was out performing austerities in the mountains and the demigods were already very concerned. They were greatly uh, inconvenienced by the austerities of Hiranyakashipu, by his demonic mentality, and the concern was that another child would also be like the father and add to their miseries. So when they realized that Hiranyakashipu's wife was pregnant, they made a plan to kidnap her with a plan that as soon as the child would be born, he would be killed. But now the Muni appeared on the scene and assured the demigods that, this, that the child in the womb of this lady is actually going to be very, very saintly. And even if they try to kill him, they would not succeed. And on the advice of Narada Muni, they released the mother who was given protection by Narada Muni. And, he, and, she, and she was also instructed by Narada Muni. And Prahlad had heard these instructions when he was in the womb of his mother. So what are the main elements of the transcendental uh, instructions that Narada Muni is talking about that Prahlad Malad gave to, the, uh, to his demoniac classmates. He repeated exactly what he had heard in the womb of his mother from Narada Muni. So the first point we learn here is that the child in the womb of the mother also has life and especially after the six months of the pregnancy has the capacity to hear and understand. So Prahlad Maharaj instructed his classmates about the special value of human life. He explained the difference between the body and the soul. Prahlad gave a nice example how the wheel is moving up and down. The same thing which is down later on becomes up and then again comes down. So he explained how the living entity is transmigrating to the different forms of life and unless one comes to the point of devotional service, one cannot stop the samsara of birth and death. So Prahlad was, was being very severely watched. Prahlad's father could never really understand where is Prahlad getting all this knowledge from. In fact, Hiranyakashipu was thinking that the Vaishnavas are disguising themselves and coming and instructing his sons. Because so, the sons of Shukracharya, Shandana Maraka, and the other watchmen were always watching, trying to make sure that Prahlad was not being influenced by any Vaishnavas. But in spite of being in this difficult situation, Prahlad still took the opportunity to preach to his classmates. So, as a result of the spiritual association that these demonic children obtained from Prahlad Maharaj, they became convinced about the value of these transcendental instructions. And as Narada Muni is describing in the verse, they took these instructions very, very seriously. And because they took these instructions seriously, they, inst they rejected the materialistic instructions that were given by their teachers. Uh, so, Prabhupada explains in the purport the effect of the preaching of a pure devotee like Prahlad Maharaj. The Vedic scriptures explain the value of obtaining spiritual association. 
साधु संग साधु संग सर्व शास्त्र काया लाभ मात्र साधु संग लाभ मात्र वन फोर्टीन और वन सेकेंड सो बाई स्पिरिचुअल बाई सोशियरिंग विद स्पिरिचुअली एडवांस वन कैन गेट इन्फ्लुएंस्ड बाई दी ट्रांसडेंटल इंस्ट्रक्शन इन चेंज द पैथ ऑफ वन लाइफ in the vedic scriptures we read about innumerable examples of the devotees of the lord who have influenced others for example in the chapter of chatamrita you know the you read the story of the hunter who is to derive great pleasure in half killing and killing in first hurting the animals who later on experience extreme pain and then gradually die and when narad muni appeared on the scene and when he identified who the responsible individual was um by the association of narad muni the hunter became so rectified that he would not even st- st- keep places feet on the ground till he made sure that there was no living entity the nature of a vaishnava is he does not want to hurt anyone here was a hunter this was his profession killing animals and he said he was so mean cr- cruel that he would derive great pleasure in hurting these animals seeing them suffer but by narada muni's association he became so transformed that he would not even step over an ant the hunter was concerned that if he gave up a sinful profession how would he maintain himself but he had faith in the instructions of narad muni and he took these instructions seriously and as a result the word spread around that this hunter had become a saint and people would come to see him and they would bring offerings and by giving up the sinful profession he realized that he did not actually lose anything he he had enough to eat and live then there are other examples we have the example of haridas thakur Haridas Thakur, as we know, was attached to the holy name. The Muhammadan Zamindar tried his best to get him to stop, and when he failed, eventually, what did he do? He sent a prostitute, a very beautiful prostitute, with the intention of seducing Haridas. But rather than being seduced, Haridas was able to influence her spiritually to the point that she became a devotee. She revealed her mischievous mission. and she gave all her possessions in charity and she took to the chanting of the holy name and became a great spiritual authority so there in even like examples in the first candy you read about anand the muni who in his previous birth was the son of a maid servant and he had the opportunity of uh he had the opportunity of eating the remnants of food stuff left by the great sages and hearing their instructions and he got so elevated spiritually that later on even when his mother died he realized that everyone who takes birth has to die and he just continued his travel he started traveling and he became such a great devotee in his next life so devotees by giving their association can transform the lives of those who are addicted to sinful activity we read about chaitanya chatur in the chaitanya chatur read about chaitanya mahaprabhu when chaitanya mahaprabhu had gone to southern india on a tour of southern india people would coming would, would come from great distances to hear his chanting to see him and just by seeing chaitanya mahaprabhu chant and dance they would be transformed and they would begin to chant and dance also and then when they would go back to their respective villages others by seeing them chant and dance would also get transformed and begin to chant and dance so some of the other if one is fortunate enough to come in contact with the preaching of a pure devotee of the lord then his life can change the vaishnavas are anxious to deliver this message of krishna consciousness therefore they are anxious to give their association to others So spiritual life begins after obtaining spiritual association and therefore one is advised to take advantage of spiritual association 
in the Bhagavatam it is explained that one can possibly obtain three types of association. You can obtain an association or have the association of somebody who is spiritually more advanced than yourself or somebody who is equally advanced and, or somebody who is less advanced. How does a devotee react in these different situations? If you have the fortune of associating with somebody who is very advanced, then a devotee rejoices. And in the Bhagavatam there is an example given of the peacocks. The peacocks, when you see the clouds for the first time, they rejoice in ecstasy. So similarly a devotee, when he has the opportunity to associate with somebody who is more advanced, he's very happy. Why? Because he gets the opportunity to receive instructions by which he can become more fixed on the devotional path. An advanced devotee is only interested in Krishna Katha. An advanced devotee is only inter interested in inspiring others also on the path of spiritual life. It is said that uh, King Dashra, the father of Lord Ramachandra, whenever somebody would come into his palace or when someone would come to meet him, he would never say, how are you? What's that normal tradition these days wherever you, when you meet someone? How are you? Isn't it? Kagpela. So, but King Dasha would inquire, what is the progress on the journey back to Godhead? So an advanced devotee is not interested in mundane talk, political talk, social talk, philanthropic talk. He is interested in only glorifying Krishna, talking about Krishna, inspiring others to also dovetail their life, to dedicate their life to Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Narada Muni explains, that when you have the opportunity to associate with somebody who is very advanced, a devotee becomes very happy, you're blissful. Then, when you get the opportunity to associate with somebody who is equally advanced, then he is happy. In the first stage, he is blissful, in ecstasy. But in the second stage, when you have the opportunity to associate with somebody who is equally advanced, a devotee becomes happy. Why? because he has the opportunity to discuss transcendental subject matters. He has the opportunity to discuss Krishna, Krishna's instruction. So you're happy. Then the next situation, the third situation is when you associate with somebody who is less advanced. So when you have the opportunity to associate with somebody who is less advanced, a devotee should display compassion. That means you preach, you preach Krishna consciousness, you think how can you bring them to Krishna consciousness. Just like in this chapter, in this section of the Bhagavatam, we have seen how Prahlad Maharaj was always concerned. Prahlad Maharaj said, my dear Lord, I'm not worried about my own liberation. So chetato vimukasa chetasa indiyata maya sukaya bhana murvatu vimuram. I'm not worried about my own liberation but I'm worried about those who are trying to convert a position of distress to a position of comfort. And hence Prahlad was anxious to preach. Even though he was being severely chastised, the difficulties that Prahlad had to go through, his father tried virtually everything under the sun to kill him. He administered poison, had him thrown from mountain chops, he was surrounded by snakes. He had elephants walk over him. Srila Prahlad did not in any way reduce his devotion or give up his faith in Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in spite of being surrounded by his father's agents, Prahlad still took every opportunity he got to preach. So a devotee, when he meets somebody who is less advanced, then actually he displays compassion. And Vaishnavas are para dukha dukhi. Prabhupada in his purport is mainly stressing this point. How by hearing from a bona fide pure devotee, even the most demonic of individuals can be transformed uh, 
a, a crow can become a swan. Crows are attracted to dirt and a swan is attracted to a clean environment. So those who have crow-like habits, those who are attracted to demonic sinful activities, when they come in contact with the pure devotee of the Lord, they can also get transformed to become like the swan. Swan is attracted to a clean environment. You never find a swan in a dirty environment. And on the other hand, you always find a crow in a dirty environment and never in a clean environment. So a crow can become a swan by associating with a pure devotee of the Lord. So purity is a force. Prabhupada talks about the preaching of a pure devotee. Prabhupada gave us a famous uh, slogan which fits in very well with the verse under review today. And that slogan is, preaching is the essence. Purity is a force. So the preaching is a main activity. The Vaishnavas who come to Mayapur Vrindavan for the annual pilgrimage, we come here to get spiritual strength. And by receiving the spiritual strength, well, we take advantage of the spiritual strength and go, go back and preach even more vigorously in our respective areas of preaching. So purity is a force. It is a purity that makes one, that, uh, that gives one the strength to influence others. And how, do you, how does purity come? Purity comes by following the instructions of the spiritual master, the Guru Parampara and the Shastra. As it is said, one who has firm faith in the instructions of the spiritual master and Krishna, only to him are all the purport of the Vedas revealed. Just like Prahlad, he had firm faith in the instructions of Narada Muni. So our faith in the instruction of Guru Sadhu Shastra has to be very firm. Uh, our, faith, our faith should not waver. We should not think, for example, that the Vedic scriptures are outdated or in today's modern environment may, we may have to interpret the Vedic scriptures. Now, the, the instructions of the Vedic scriptures are known as Sanatan Dharma. These, these are eternal instructions for entire humanity. So with faith, if we set the instructions of the spiritual master, the Guru Parampara and Krishna, then one is going to make progress on the path of purity. And then he'll be able to understand the purpose of the revealed scriptures. So it is very important that we receive these instructions from an authorized, bona fide source. For example, here in India, we see a lot of people preaching the Srimad Bhagavata. It is very common in India, people hold Bhagavat Saptas and people are attracted to the message of Bhagavata. But why do these Bhagavad Saptas not succeed in creating or injecting the mood of austerity, truthfulness, cleanliness, mercifulness, which are described as the four essential ingredients of religion? Why? Because, to begin with, those who are doing the Bhagavad Kathas, they themselves are not pure. Most of them happen to do this for professional reasons. And because they themselves don't follow the principles of purity, they are not able to inspire others to the path of purity. So it is important that we receive these transcendental instructions, as Prabhupada explains in the purport, from a qualified source. And when you receive it from a qualified source, then there will be the development of love of God. Prabhupada quotes, this very famous verse from the third canto of the Bhagavatam. Satatam prasangam mama veriya samvido bhavanti hit karnar sayana katha. So this verse describes, uh, these are instructions of Lord Kapila Dev. This verse describes that if you receive instructions from a pure bona fide source, then there will be the development of love of God. And when there is the development of love of God, then automatically, they will be the cessation of materialistic desires. You can't give up activities of sense enjoyment, you can't give up activities of sense gratification, 
unless he don't experience a higher taste. Once he experiences a higher taste, then he can give up your inferior activities. And the higher taste is the taste of Krishna consciousness. The taste, once you begin to develop the taste of Krishna consciousness, then you can give up your taste for lust, anger, greed, envy, hatred, etc. Then you can give up these anarthas. But if we don't experience the higher taste, then it will not be possible to give up the lower taste. We all have experience of that. Uh, at one time, we were all addicted to sinful activities. But then as we commenced a spiritual life, uh, we began to gradually lose taste for these sinful activities. And as we got ourselves more immersed in spiritual activities, e easier it was to give up these sinful activities. So, in the third canto, the verse that Prabhupada quotes in, the, in this purport, Lord Kapila Dev is explaining that by associating and hearing from pure devotees, you can make spiritual advancement. And with that strength, you can give up the taste for sense enjoyment. So, spiritual instructions, when they're received from a proper source, when they're received from a genuine, a pure devotee of the Lord, it has a very powerful effect. Just like the Bhagavatam explains, Nasta Prayeshwa Bhadresha Nitya Bhagavat Seva Bhagavatatma Shloke Bhakti Bhagavati Naistiki. By hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam regularly, the Prabhupada explained there are two Bhagavats, the person Bhagavat and the book Bhagavat. So, by hearing this regularly, loving devotional service is established and all that is inauspicious in the heart is destroyed. Therefore, we should associate with pure devotees. We should associate with those who themselves are following the pure devotees. Someone may argue that I am not a pure devotee as yet. So what's the value of my going out to preach, isn't it? Uh, let me first become a pure devotee and then I'm going to start preaching. So what's the value of my going out to preach, isn't it? Uh, let me first become a pure devotee and then I'm going to start preaching. Someone could argue that way. But actually, if, you, if you're following the pure devotee and if you're repeating the instructions of the pure devotee as it is, then by your faith in following the instructions and passing on what you've heard, you will, you will become empowered to preach and your preaching will also have. So, it is important that we associate and what do you do when you associate? You hear. Hearing is the key to spiritual life. We hear attentively. Prabhupada used to often tell us how when he would go to hear his spiritual master, he would hear very, very attentively. Even if he could not understand, he would still hear attentively. And Bhakti Siddhanta Ji was so pleased by Prabhupada's attentive hearing that he remarked that this boy hears nicely, so one day he's going to be he's going to preach very nicely also. Now, in recent memory, we also have the example of pure devotee of the Lord who transformed the lives of demoniac individuals. Who is that individual? Ah, Srila Prabhupada. Just like we read Srila Prabhupada King, just like we read about Palad Maharaj. Palad Maharaj by his instructions he was able to transform those born in demoniac families. We, we discussed how Narada Muni got transformed. We explained how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu transformed the lives of so countless individuals. Not only the gross materialists, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu helped transform the lives of so many unlimited people. The Kazi got transformed, um, the Sanatana Rupa got transformed, how Prakashananda Saraswati, he was a leader of thousands of impersonalists. How they were transformed. You read about how the Buddhists, there was uh, once the Buddha, once Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had defeated the Buddhists in a philosophical debate. So the Buddhists had conspired that they felt very insulted that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had defeated them. So they made a plan by which they were going to serve some contaminated food to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to eat. Of course, they didn't realize that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none else but the personality of Godhead. So on a plate, they took some contaminated food, which was going to be offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and as soon as the plate was placed in front of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, 
bird came from the top, left her the food. The bird ate the contaminated food and dropped the plate on the head of the guru of the Buddhas. And the guru at once fainted. So when the guru fainted, his followers all realized, oh, this is because of the evil plan that we had. Now by the purity of this great devotee, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our guru is about to die. So they went crying to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, falling at his feet, begging forgiveness. And they said, please save our guru. And what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu say? He said, go and whisper in your guru's ears the Hare Krishna mantra. And they went and whispered the Hare Krishna mantra in the ears of their guru. And he came back to consciousness. And they all became devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu transformed the brothers. Then there was Prakashan and the Saraswati in Varanasi who had thousands of impulses followed with him. How? Uh, they, they were criticizing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu initially. They were saying, why are you reading, why are you chanting and dancing on the streets? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had the reputation of being a very prominent Sanskrit scholar. He was known as Dimai Pandit. So they were saying, why aren't you reading the Vedanta? And they were all transformed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and they became huh, great Vaishnavas. Then Sarvabhama Bhattacharya, he was another great Sanskrit scholar, an incarnation of Vyaspati. He also got transformed. So, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu transformed unlimited uh, individuals to the path of pure devotional service. You have the example of Lord Nityananda, how he saved Jagai and Madai, and we give other how Narada Muni was transformed. And in recent history, exactly what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, what Lord Nityananda did, what Prahlad Maharaj did, was done by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada transformed millions of lectures into uh, becoming pure Vaishnavas. Once somebody asked Prabhupada in India if Prabhupada could do any magic. Because in India, if you can do some magic, uh, your status as a guru is enhanced. So uh, most of the gurus these days attract people by doing some magic. So uh, Prabhupada said, no, I can't do any magic. But one magic I've done. What's that magic? I've transformed millions, uh, countless thousands of lectures into brahmanas. So not only did Prabhupada transform countless lectures into brahmanas, but by Prabhupada's potency that is there in his book, Lectures are still being transformed, isn't it? It's not that the preaching stopped and Prabhupada virtually left the planet. No. The pure devotee of the Lord associates with the conditioned souls in two forms. One is known as Vapu, the other is known as Vani. So Prabhupada was associating with the conditioned souls of Kali Yoga in his Vapu form. Of course, he's still with us in his Vapu form, in his photographs, murtis, and so on. But he's also associating with countless individuals all over the world in his Vani form. That is, in his instructions, in the Bhakti and the purports to the books left behind by Vyasadev. And when people read these books, what happens? They re-examine their lives. When they read these books, they begin to examine what is the goal of life. Because when they read these books, they read Krishna is supreme. Human life is very rare. You're not this body. You're pure spirit soul. The true life is nothing but the Kalayama Shashatam. And if you want real happiness, then turn to Krishna, the supreme personality of God. And people, when they read these books, of course they do get convinced. Sometimes we have a tendency to underestimate the potency of these books. Sometimes we have a tendency to doubt that these books can really transform the lives of people. But that is the, the power of the illusory energy. We must have full faith that as long as we distribute these books, people will continue to take to the path of Krishna consciousness. Sitting right here in Vrindavan in 1976, Prabhupada was sitting in his garden. Have all of you seen Prabhupada's garden in the back? Have you all had a tour of Prabhupada's apartment, the house where Prabhupada used to live? 
You should have a good, there's a small garden with a fountain. The property should sit over there every evening to talk to his disciples. So once he's uh, 76, he told his disciples who were there that as long as book distribution goes on, I will never die. So as long as we preach and distribute this transcendent literature, property will never die because he's preaching through his books. He's preaching through his instructions. Therefore, it is the desire of the Vaishnava that even if they are in a difficult situation, they should preach because preaching gives a Vaishnava pleasure. Therefore, Krishna says in the 18th chapter of the Gita that there is never one more dear to him than one who preaches his mission. And there will never be one more dear than one who becomes a preacher. So actually it's very interesting, this verse and purport are actually emphasizing this point, the value of preaching. If we preach Krishna consciousness, uh, people will take to Krishna consciousness. And when we endeavor to preach Krishna consciousness, the Guru is pleased, the predecessor of Charya is pleased, and above all the Supreme Lord is pleased. After all, Krishna gave the instructions on preaching. Not recently, but when the Bhagavad Gita was spoken to the sun god Vivaswa, you read about the value of preaching in the Bhagavad Gita, isn't it? 18th chapter. And when was the Bhagavad Gita spoken? 5,000 years ago? No, it was spoken to the sun god Vivaswa. So the point is in the that when transcendental knowledge gave, was given, Millions of years ago, the Lord emphasized the value of preaching. So, Prabhupada wanted this movement, it wanted all the devotees in this movement to dedicate their lives to preaching the mission of the Lord. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also told us, Jari Dasataya Kaho Krishna Upadesh. And we see that the Acharyas in our Parampara, you know, they always took advantage of whatever facilities were given to expand preaching. Just like before Thakur Bhakti, when the printing industry uh, came into existence about 200 years ago. Huh? So Thakur Bhakti, we know, as soon as he established the true teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had got greatly distorted. In fact, it was the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, wasn't identified correctly. Never it was being identified as the birthplace rather than Sri Mayapur. And it was Thakur Bhakti Nod uh, who identified the correct birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that was confirmed by Jagannath Das Babaji. So, after Thakur Bhakti Nod reestablished the true teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he took advantage of the paper industry or the printing industry, and he printed his book on the life of uh, life and precepts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he sent that book to universities all over the world. And in other words, prior to that, the teachings of not established had become distorted. But Dr. Bhaktinod, he used the facility of printing books and he printed them and distributed them all over the world. And he wrote so many books and instructed his disciple Bhakti Sarandaji also, who did the same thing, who in turn passed on the same instruction to Srila Prabhupada. Bhakti Sananda Saraswati also used dioramas and other modern innovations in presenting the Krishna conscious philosophy. And Prabhupada took this even further. So the great Acharyas have emphasized the value of preaching. We preach Krishna consciousness through various outlets, through various forms, various devices. The principal devices, the form of book distribution. Then there are also other forms. Um, we go on Hari now, we do Prashad distribution, we have dioramas, we have exhibitions, we build museums. And the whole purpose of everything is to convey, to give others the opportunity, to give those who are leading a sinful life the opportunity to understand where, how real happiness can be found. Prahlad Maharaj has very clearly established Nerte Vidum Swarta Gatim Hivishnum Durate Bhair Arthamanina. Prahlad Maharaj has clearly established that uh, people do not know how real happiness can be found. Hence, they are the VC. Blind are leading the blind. And when the blind leads the blind, what happens? They all end up falling in the ditch. Therefore, it is the business of those with vision 
to save others who are also headed for the ditch. In the fifth canto, uh, Lord Rishabdev gives a nice example. Lord Rishabdev says that a gentleman doesn't like to see a blind man walk on the wrong path. A gentleman, when he sees a blind man walking on the wrong path, he holds his hand and directs him to the right path, isn't it? So similarly, Lord Rishabdev explains that those who have vision, they have to give vision to others also. This Prabhupada very strongly emphasizes this in the purport. So, if, if with faith we endeavor to preach, then even if there are some shortcomings, those shortcomings will be overcome. Krishna is anxious to help us. Krishna tells us in the Gita that those who worship him with, the, with devotion, he preserves what they have and he makes them what they lack. So even if we had no ability, no qualification, in fact the nature of a devotee is, he always thinks that he has no ability. He thinks that he has no qualification. He thinks that he has accomplished nothing. For example, again here in Vrindavan, when Prabhupada was getting ready to leave uh, the planet, he told us one day that I have done nothing at all. Even though Prabhupada had established uh, the Krishna conscious movement all over the world and saved the life of unlimited entities, still he was saying, I have done nothing at all. So you can just see his humility. So a devotee, even if he has succeeded in something, the nature of a devotee is to think that I've done nothing at all and he always endeavors to increase his service. Endeavor to repeat what we have heard, to repeat what we have been instructed, to repeat what we have read as it is without adding or minusing anything, then we will also be able to transform the lives of demonic individuals who are being preached about sinful activity. Just like over here we see that uh, Sunday in America, they were preaching to Prahlad and his classmates about what? Sense enjoyment, isn't it? They were preaching how you must identify with the body, how you must divide the society into friends and enemies. But their preaching fell on deaf ears. They, their preaching did not have any effect. So similarly we see in today's society, the political leaders, the so-called educational leaders, the social leaders, etc., they're all preaching one message, isn't it? Like politically, you may have different isms, socialism, communism, capitalism, of course these days it's all boiled down to one thing, communism with a class of communism, but you may have so many isms, but basically everyone's interested in only one thing. And what's that? sense enjoyment. Doesn't matter which part of the world you live in, doesn't matter what your community is, doesn't matter what your religious background is, whether you're Hindu, Christian, Muslim, doesn't matter. Everybody only has one mantra, goal of life is sense enjoyment. And that's all they're interested in. So everyone is preaching, you must go in the area of sense enjoyment. But all this preaching can be defeated, counteracted by the preaching of devotees. We, we must have full faith that this, this demoniac preaching can be counteracted if we with faith go out and preach, distribute these books and repeat the messages that we have heard, then this will have the potency. Uh, Krishna consciousness has, is destined to go on expanding for the next 10,000 years. Even though Kali Yuga is advancing, the golden era of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also going to go on expanding. We have to have faith. We have to have full faith in the instructions and have and practice the path of purity. And it is practicing this path of purity that will give us the strength to preach. And by preaching, we will become blissful and we'll make others blissful. Just like in the Bhagavatam, you read how Shukadeva Swami, he recited the Bhagavatam. That gave him pleasure. And Parachit Maharaj, he also benefited. He also perfected his life. So, the nature of preaching is such that the preacher gets recognized by Krishna. The Lord reciprocates by inspiring the individual he preached to, to also take to Krishna consciousness. So, to summarize the verse, there are the Muni over here describing 
how Prahlad's instructions were greatly appreciated by his demoniac classmates and even Prahlad's uh, classmates, they took his instructions as the verse describes very, very seriously. So we have to be very, very serious about Krishna consciousness. We have to be very serious about this real human form of life. We should be determined to use every second of our time constructively in Krishna consciousness. And we have to be determined to reject the materialistic instructions that have been given by everyone but the genuine devotees of the Lord who are only interested in Krishna conscious activities. And if we dedicate ourselves with determination, then we will become strong spiritually and our purity will inspire others to also save themselves from the miseries of birth and death. And this is the desire of the Lord, that we become preachers and we bring all the conditioned souls back to the Supreme Lord. And Prabhupada emphasizes again and again and again. So we as devotees should take these instructions very seriously and we should have faith that if we sincerely follow the process then we will be able to save countless demonic entities and make their life blissful by giving them the blissful process of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare.